Hello everyone, this is Vortex259. And yes, I am still alive, believe it or not. My apologies for the long hiatus that I was forced to take over the past few weeks. My job has been keeping me extremely busy. Plus the fact that I've been out of town off and on has really prevented me from uploading any new episodes as of late. But those days are behind me now. I've got a lot more free time on my hands. So I should be able to upload new episodes much more frequently starting today. So once again, my apologies. Thank you for your patience. And welcome back to a new episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy IV Advance. In our last episode, Cecil, Rydia, and Tella jumped down a huge waterfall. And they landed in the sunken lake where they fought a few new monsters, picked up some new treasure, and then they headed toward the exit. But it seems to be guarded by a squirmy, squid-like creature. So let's step forward and investigate here. Tella says, there he is. Well, we've got more than two tentacles. We've got four, six, eight tentacles. Oh no! That must be what that little boy in Kaipo was talking about when he said the exit was guarded by eight huge sea serpents. Tella says, watch out! Uh-oh, we're going to be accosted by the Octomammoth. A huge octopus with eight big tentacles waiting to attack us. Now the Octomammoth only has one attack, which is basically just a physical attack, but he can attack very rapidly for some decent damage, especially to Rydia and Tella in the background there. So to counter that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Rydia use the Hermes shoes that we picked up on this floor. And it's going to cast the Haste spell on Rydia, which will make her ATB bar fill up very quickly, thereby allowing her to attack quicker than everyone else. As far as Tella goes, I'm just going to have him repeatedly use the Thunder spell. The Octo Mammoth is weak against Thunder, and I'm going to have Cecil attack. Now the Octo Mammoth has 2,350 HP in total, so it'll take a little bit of time to whittle all of that down. But as you do damage to the Octo Mammoth, you'll notice that his tentacles will start disappearing. That's how you can tell that he's starting to weaken. So we're down to seven tentacles now. So we'll just kind of rinse and repeat here. This is really going to be a straightforward battle, nothing to it at all. And that Hermes Shoes item really helps matters out because the Chocobo Summon comes in pretty handy in this battle. It can do a lot of damage, over 100 points of damage usually. We're now down to six tentacles on the Octo Mammoth. It's too bad you can't take the chopped off tentacles and whop him over the head with them for extra damage, but we'll just have to make do with what we have here. Down to five now. We'll just have to keep an eye on Rydia's HP since she has the lowest. She's in pretty good shape as of right now. Now if you're playing the DS version of this game, you'll find that the Octo Mammoth is a little bit harder, especially when you get him down to two tentacles left. He'll start hitting you for much more damage than he normally does, but the GBA version is a lot easier, so I'm not really too worried about this battle. 162 points of damage. That one's got plenty of MP to use, as does Iridia. Alright, let's just get him down to two tentacles here. There we go. Now that he's down to two, Tella says, excellent. He's weakening. Alright. We're nearly at the end of this battle now. One tentacle left. Looks like he's giving us the giant finger. I guess he's giving us the tentacle there. There we go, we defeat the Octo Mammoth. Pretty easy battle. We get 500 gil and 400 experience points for our trouble. And Rydia gains a level and she learns the Toad spell. Very nice. She can now turn enemies into Toads. All right, Telus has come now. Damsian is beyond this waterfall. So we now have access to the exit which will take us on to the overworld. Okay, well I'm gonna take just a moment here and save my game. 
heal up my characters and once I do that, I'll be right back. Okay, I've gotten all of those necessities taken care of. I went ahead and used a tent and recovered everyone's HP and MP back to full. All right, well, let's take just a minute here and check out that new entry in the bestiary. We have a new boss monster to take a look at. The entry for the Octomammoth is number 193 in our list. As you can see, it does have a lot of HP. Unfortunately, the Octomammoth does not drop any treasure, but it offers a ton of experience points. 1,200 experience divided amongst the three characters is 400 apiece, which is not too shabby at all. Check out the resistance. The Octomammoth is resistant to just about everything you can think of, and it even absorbs holy damage. Now, in addition to being weak against lightning, the Octomammoth is also weak against darkness, which I find to be interesting. But the combination of Tella's Thunder Spell, Cecil's Dark Sword, and Rydia's Chocobo Summon was enough to clear out that beast. And we have added yet another notch in our bestiary. We are now 9% complete. Now one more thing I want to take care of real quick is I want to put Tella in the front row. You may think that's crazy, but you'll see why I want to do that here very shortly. All right, well now that we've defeated the Octomammoth, we now have access to Damsian Castle. So we can go inside the castle and talk to the king and hopefully get permission to enter the Antlion Cave so that we can find the Sand Ruby and save Rosa's life. So let's start heading toward the castle. Let's head off to the north here. Well, there's Castle Damsian and hey, what's going on here? Is that the Red Wings? What are they doing? Oh no, they're bombing the castle! Those jerks! Oh man! Well, we'd better hurry up and go inside the castle and make sure everyone's okay. Unfortunately though, we're going to arrive too late. Damsian Castle's in smoldering shambles. And there are men down all over the place, including this soldier near the front of the castle, who appears to be dead. Well, let's start searching for survivors. This guy looks to be dead too. Well, let's keep looking. Let's go through this doorway, which will take us to the first floor of Damsian Castle. Now we've got a couple of more men down on the ground here. This guy is still alive, but barely. He says they stole the crystal. Why couldn't they just rough up the king like Cecil did to the old man in Mesidia? Instead, they had to show off and bomb the place. Yep, the soldier says the bombardment was too much. Well, let's keep searching. Let's go upstairs here to the second floor. This time we have four soldiers down on the ground. This soldier says the healing pots upstairs. I must... Apparently there are healing pots upstairs. We'll have to keep that in the back of our mind. Yet another dead soldier. Ooh, treasure. And inside we'll find a tent. Very good. That will replace the one that I just used. More death. Lots of destruction here. And this is all the Red Wings doing, it looks like. Yep, the bombardment was just too much for the place. Well, going upstairs to the third floor, we'll find a young maiden down on the ground. Tella says, is that... It is! Anna! Oh no, not Tella's daughter, Anna. And who is this guy? Tella says, you! You're that bard! Anna ran away because of your treachery. Uh-oh, looks like Tella's going to get into a little scuffle with this dude. Nice hat. Well, Tella tends to miss a lot. That's the reason I put him in the front row. Ah, he connects with his staff. He says, you, Spoony Bard. Yep, they kept the line in. It's not you, Forky Bard, or you, Knifey Bard. It's you, Spoony Bard. Classic. Tella says, die. And the Bard just keeps begging him to listen. But Tella says, shut up. The Bard says, forgive me, please. Tella's just going to keep wailing on him. <laughs> he looks kind of like a crazy old geezer swiping at a little kid with his cane. Alright, there he goes. He connects with the Bard there. He says, take this. But Anna begs them to stop. So they stop fighting and they gather around Anna, who appears to be very badly hurt. Well, is Tella's daughter Anna going to recover? 
or are her wounds too much for her? And who was controlling the Red Wings anyway? And why did they blow up Dancian Castle? Well, we'll find out those answers in our next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy IV Advance. Thank you for watching today's episode, everyone. This has been Vortex259, your host. Have a great day. We'll see you again next time.